Ono community across the country, but with particular attention to the farmers, given the agricultural bias of the NES. The rationale for this consultative approach was to ensure that the strategies to be implemented reflect the realities on the ground and are relevant to confronting and addressing the challenges of export development in the Gambia. Premise on Vision 2020, the PAGE and the National Trade Policy. And our main goals are to achieve export-led economic growth, improve and sustain export performance, and achieve trade competitiveness. Ten years ago, I, um, iPhone apps, Google, and Facebook did not exist. Today, they contribute in terms of transaction billions of export from the US to the world all over. It is possible for Gambia to develop a niche technology sector for Africa. The national export strategy aims to accelerate competitive growth-led economy by the private sector with priority to innovation and technology development. This as exemplified by technocrats seeks to boost trade, infrastructural development and create employment with an overriding aim of making the smiling coast a net exporter. As nations strive to increase their global share of world trade, it is only prudent that strategies be put in place to support the realization of these objectives. Let me seize this opportunity to once again call upon the Gambian private sector and the private sector in general and challenge them to leverage the fiscal incentives and benefits extended by the Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency to grow their businesses with the objective of exporting to the international market. As the next blueprint yearns for public-private partnership with massive investment in all productive sectors of the economy, the document requires 431 million U.S. dollars for its effective operations. Whether these resources will be mobilized or not, initiatives are bent on succeeding as the 100-mile journey just began. The Gambia joins the global meteorological community to commemorate World Meteorology Day. And in observance of the day, the Minister of Fisheries and Water Resources, Mas Aksigai, delivered a televised statement on the theme, Watching the Weather to Protect Life and Property, with the subtitle celebrating 50 years of World Weather Watch. Here's an excerpt. This theme focuses attention on the crucial role of meteorological services in strengthening safety and resilience to weather events. It also pays tribute to the World Weather Watch, a foundation program of the WMO that marks 50 years of activity this year. It is worthy of note that the World Weather Watch program brings into focus the interdependence of countries in reducing risk associated with climate change system. The slogan what direction is the wind coming from in the such stance for what type of weather is expected? Requires countries to operate weather observation networks that resort simultaneously on prevailing weather conditions at specific times to exchange the data with the rest of the world. Dear viewers, weather extremes have a tremendous impact on the entire planet's population and economy and the impact will increase as population and economies grow. For example, between 1980 and 2007, nearly 7,500 natural disasters took the lives of over 2 million people and produced economic losses estimated at over US 1.2 trillion. More than 70% of the casualties and almost 80% of the economic losses were caused by weather climate or water-related hazards such as tropical cyclones and storm surge, droughts, floods or related disease epidemics, and insect infestation over time. Over time, there has been a significant reduction in the loss of life thanks to early warning issues by national meteorological and hydrological services. Economic losses have, however, increased. The Gambia is certainly not spared from weather, climate, and water-related hazards. And as recently as 2011, the government and friends of the Gambia needed over $800 million to support communities facing hardship following the poor rains in some parts of the country. It is worth of note that the above 
amount was only destined to provide relief as a such loss in livelihood and other damages incurred by the affected communities has not been accounted for. As a developing country, spending such an amount on relief alone demonstrates the heavy burden that we have to face to handle climate hazards. The Honorable Minister of Fisheries and Water Resources, Mass Axi Guy. Well, time now to take our first break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the international news. Stay tuned then. Energy, energizing Gambia. KGI Fashion Shop, Standard Chattered House, now brings you the very best ladies' lingerie, dress and tops, fashion jewelry, house curtains, ladies' wigs and mesh, ladies' shoes and marching bags, incense, coats and blazers for ladies, and much, much more. Wonderful men's fashion, including men's shirts and trousers. The best prices in town at KGI Fashion Shop. Go to KGI Fashion Shop. Welcome back to GRTS News. Thousands of Malians have fled their country for Mauritania where they arrived under harsh conditions. The refugees, who are mainly light-skinned, said they have to leave their homes in a hurry for fear of reprisal attacks they are subjected to because of their skin color. We have details in the CFI report. After many long hours on the road and many hardships, these Malian refugees have finally arrived in Mauritania. Most fled the country in such haste that they had no time to bring food or water with them. There are a lot of cases of malnutrition because of the journey. They are first registered at this transit station before being sent to the Fasal refugee camp a few kilometers away. The conditions there, however, are extremely precarious. It's very bad. We did not bring any clothes. We sit outside in the sun. There's no shade, no water. But it's worth it when we imagine what would have happened to us if we had stayed. In Mali, Tuaregs and Arabs are called peau claire, light-skinned. Thousands have crossed into Mauritania since French and Malian forces launched the operation to retake northern Mali from Islamist rebels. The army killed a lot of people. Whenever they find someone, they kill him. They make no distinction. If you are light-skinned, they kill you. We couldn't go to the markets because of the color of our skin. The blacks would attack us. Tuaregs and Arabs quickly come under suspicion in Mali as supporters of the Mujau or Acme. For this reason, they have come to Mauritania. To date, some 150,000 have taken refuge in neighboring countries. A Congolese warlord, Bosco Taganda, who turned himself in at the U.S. Embassy in Rwanda, has been flown to the International Criminal Court to face war crimes charges. And fighting has once again broken out between the rebel coalition, Seleka, and soldiers in the Central African Republic. A rebel spokesman claimed that a strategic town situated 250 kilometers from Bangwe was captured with little resistance. We have details of this and other stories in this news roundup by CF. On Friday, Democratic Republic of Congo rebel leader Bosco Ntanga was heading to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. The warlord is to face charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in the Democratic Republic of Congo between 2002 and 2003. To the world's surprise, Ntanga turned himself in to the American Embassy in Kigali on Monday and asked to be sent to the ICC. On Thursday in the Central African Republic, fighting broke out between the rebel coalition Seleka and the army in the town of Bosangoa. It is located in the east of the country, 250 kilometers from Bangui. 
but the rebels...